Um, <laughs> okay, guys. So Amber's going to be doing the project mostly. I'm going to be beating along and I'm going to use my original loom and she's going to show you on the Wisdom Warrior. But I wanted to kind of go over the kit um, and we're going to touch on a couple of the changes that have been made with it just recently. So uh, Jules loves <laughs> us. So that's good. So for the kit, you get a whole six pack of Jewel Loom needles and you can never have enough of these. Believe me. Um, <laughs> the more I get, the more happy I am because then I can just keep on looming. But it comes in this really cute little velvet bag. And you're going to get your five tubes of Toho seed beads. And that's a deal right there, guys, because, you know, Toho is, you know, one of the top brands and they have some gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I hope my lighting's OK. Yeah. Um, so you're going to get this one is called transparent. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not go over the colors because we're going to talk about the colors here in a minute. But you get your five tubes. And then you're going to get your really pretty bar clasp here that is super easy to put on. The other thing uh, I do want to show you, we're going to go over the pattern. And this is a printable pattern that you're going to get with the purchase of your uh, bead kit with for the uh, bracelet. Okay, so this is the original pro project right here, guys. Super pretty and just you know, really came together very nicely for me. So, and we'll go over the pattern here just quickly. I'll give you the basic um, once over on how to kind of read the pattern. So what I did, I printed mine out. Uh, Amber does use hers on her uh, iPad. For me, I, I am definitely a paper person. So this makes it easier for me. And I can also mark off as I go if I want to. So basically, I start here at the bottom. <clears throat> And we have this extra row down here. Now, this extra row is nice because then you can put your slide clasp on and it doesn't cover, cover up any of your diamonds that you've made. So with all that work, you certainly don't want to cover up your diamonds, these or any other kind of diamonds. Um, but <laughs> you're going to have this row here and you're going to... It is eight warps across here, guys. And the reason it's eight warps across is because there's seven beads in there so always remember one extra warp for however many beads wide you want it to be so this is the basic pattern anything you think you would like to add on that amber uh just a couple uh different things uh jules mentioned uh to remind us that the beaded pattern does not get the needles but if you buy one of the looms, so if you buy the small oh, gotcha. wisdom warrior mm -hmm. or the large wisdom warrior, you actually right. get the pattern with that. And then you would get the needles. Gotcha. So, but, so if yeah. you just buy the kit, then you're going to get your, your beads and your slider clasp. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you for clarifying that, Ms. Jules. Oh, sure. And oh, Amber, yeah. too. <laughs> Amber too. Amber too. <laughs> so I think that's it on my end. And and also, guys, I do want to tell you, too, as far as the colors, I think Amber has it pulled up on her yes. iPad. But Jules just redid the pattern with some new colors. And I think I'm going to have to get it because it has some <laughs> gorgeous amethyst in it. I'm a purple and pink girl. I love blue, too, turquoise. But Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some, some new kits up that have some beautiful amethyst colors in. So that's enough yes. of me talking. So let's get to the teacher here. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> fine. So let's see if this will work to show you guys on my iPad here. So here go. let's see if I can get it to flip. So here's the current pattern. Move. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Um, and I don't know, block the light a little here, but as you can <laughs> see, you know, the uh, the two tubes that you would normally would have gotten before of the blue is more of this purpley amethyst dark. It's it's so it's beautiful. Pretty. And then there's these three colors along with it. So this is like another purplish, an orange, and a pale pink. Oh, so that's so pretty. Yeah. So yeah, I oh, agree. I, I'm <laughs> going to want to get this one too. I really like them both, but that is pretty. And as you can see, I use um, on my iPad to pull up the pattern. Uh, I use good notes. So that's the program I use and you can actually write on it and stuff. Um, but yeah, Trish so. just has her paper. up there. I'm not that technically savvy. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, so Trish has her paper and I have, so I'm going to be working on, this is the small Wisdom Warrior. She is the same size as the original. So, yep. So as you can see, they're yep. the same size. Um, the big difference is, uh, is this one doesn't have a bar. So it, you warp it slightly different. Yes. Um, so if you, <clears throat> you can buy the small wisdom warrior and you can get the, this, this, uh, pattern, or you can just buy the pattern itself with the beads. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also, if you buy the large wisdom warrior, you can get this, uh, nice bead board with it but this also sells separately by itself so as trish mentioned you get these full tubes as you can see mine are getting low <laughs> now but um so we are like what extra can we do with it so we came up tonight we're gonna learn how to make the pattern with in a ring okay so fun, so fun. And then I also, one thing you can do on both. Now you could do the ring on the baby loom. So I can show you that really quick. I have mine here. So we, we could do it on here. Um, that's feasible too. Or you can do it on the small wisdom or, or even the original. Um, yeah. Or if you have the moon loom, you could probably do it on that one too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep, I'm <clears throat> sure you could. And I also, at the same time, now doing it on this or the original, I, I was able to do three different things. So I made these earrings. We won't be able to probably do these tonight, but uh, it would be the same idea as the bracelet and, um, and the ring, but the bracelet, just you would do the slides just like the bracelet, mm -hmm. um, cool. but it's only one diamond. So... So take what you're learning and play around with it, okay? Um, so one thing when you're doing a ring, uh, it's like, how do you measure? One way I like to measure is just getting a piece of paper. Pick the finger that you're going to put, make your ring on. Mine are two sticky notes put together, so it's not perfect. But oh, that works. <laughs> that works. Um, and then you want to figure out where it falls on your finger. So it falls to about here. Let me do this right. <laughs> I had this earlier. <laughs> oh, it's I'm losing sure. its stickiness, stickiness. So measure your finger. Okay. <clears throat> and then you can take very easily take that piece of paper and just lay it right next to, I know what size mine is, but take your piece of paper. <laughs> and lay it next to your ruler. And then you know exactly how long you need to make your ring. So yep. mine is about uh, two, um, two and a three fourths or somewhere around there. Um, and what that averaged out for me on the ring is I was able to do one, two, three, four diamonds. So two of each, co two of each color. And then what I did, just like when we did the bracelet, I don't know if you can see it. There's a row of that purple on each end. And that's where we'll close off our ring. Okay. okay. So that's what I did. That extra row um, in the pattern. I did it with a purple. You can, I just chose to do that. But um, you can choose whatever. But for the ring, I would recommend doing the purple. Out of all of the seed beads in the kit... Now they're all the same size, but sometimes the holes are slightly different. And I found that the blue ones tend to be smaller. I don't know what, we'll have to find out in the new kit which ones, but I found if you have the older colors, I found this purple from, from the middle diamonds uh, is a really good one because to close it up, we're gonna have to go through several times. And I kept finding I was breaking the blue seed beads. So okay. learning from my, <laughs> what learning I was from doing. Mistakes, that's for sure. Hey, yeah. 
because experience. Yeah. So the so that's where we're gonna start with a row of that color and end with a row of that color. <clears throat> so for me, it worked out actually perfectly to make the the pattern with the four diamonds. And then I didn't have so this takes the place of the row with the one color and then the five middle. Okay. So just to give you a heads up on that. So once you have your size measured, put that aside so you remember how much, because you'll need to know um, in order to put it on your whatever loom you're using today. So everybody grab your loom, whether it's uh, the baby loom, the small wisdom warrior, the, uh, the original, and you want to get out. I enjoy wildfire. That's my favorite. <clears throat> so I'm just going to start it. We're going to come down here to the knob. Let's see if I can get <laughs> resting it on my goddess belly, just like you would <laughs> for uh, putting uh, putting the rod in to the original. So I'm holding it there, and I'm going to tie a knot. This is hard to do it on screen. <laughs> of course, I know that feeling. So I do a double knot. And as Trish said, we need to warp eight. So make sure that knot's on there. <clears throat> so these grooves are just like the original warrior. Um, I like to put mine right in the center. You can put yours to the side. It's up to you. So we're going to come down and try and match up as best as possible. Now, on the Small Wisdom Warrior, I like to go around the knob twice to try and hold the tension. I'm also holding my finger over top of the warp. And then we're going to skip one and lay it back down in there for the next one. And then once again, I put my thumb here right next to the knob to try and hold the tension so I don't lose any of that tension while I'm going up. And hold the tension and I I wrap around twice trying to... So whereas the original, you don't have to hold the tension as much because you have the bar and you can pull it out. But on this one you do. So as you can see, my finger is resting on the thread so I don't have to, so I can come out and get some more off of my spool. And then I can come, I wrap it around my finger to try and hold the tension coming down and just kind of drag it through my fingers and wrap it around that knob twice. And same thing, put my finger down here to hold the tension and then come back up. And we're up to four now. <laughs> Talking so much about other stuff, I can't remember. <laughs> and now you're um, working right from the spool. Is that correct, Amber? That is correct. So okay. when I warp, I work right from the spool. Yeah. I don't cut it off until I'm uh, doing the weft. Mm -hmm. So for the warps. Now see, because I hold my finger there, I can, I don't have to have oodles and oodles of my wildfire out, but I can free my hand up to get some extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great technique. And, and then same thing, come down, hold that so it holds the tension. Skip one, lay it back down. We're one, two, three, four, five. Finishing up, going to six here. <clears throat> Wrap around twice. Now, one reason you might not want to do this ring on the original or the small wisdom warrior is because you use a lot of materials. So that's why I showed you can make earrings tonight too. Um, or you can do the baby loom if you own that. But I am just gonna do the ring for you guys tonight. Um, ooh, almost lost my wildfire to the floor. <laughs> Or you could do multiple rings like you were saying on it yep. at one time and then that's true. You're just knocking it out of the park. Well, I want <laughs> for tonight, I just want to make sure I can show right. everybody how to get it off. The Absolutely. 
but just yes. in general. Yeah. Yes, I would do that. That's true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is my last one coming back up. Holding that tension, wrap around, and I'll wrap around a couple more times because I'm at the end here. And then my cutters. So cut pretty far back here so I can tie the knot. You were going to ask a good question, Trish? Um, no. 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 Okay. So hopefully you guys can see me tying the knot upside down than what I normally do. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to hold the tension. So I put my finger down here on the knob so I can hold the tension, but also slide my thread in and wrap it around the warps. It's hard to do this upside down. Sorry. It sure is. <laughs> Sometimes I even use pliers to, to help guide it if my fingers aren't working. All right, I just have to turn this around. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I can't do it backwards. Maybe I can do it upside down for you. How are we doing on your, your, uh, your end over there, Trish? Um, I'm doing good. I just, I am kind of jumping ahead. I'm a bad student, but <laughs> I started, put, I started putting my first row across of the purple beads. No problem. Awesome. <laughs> yep. It's working, working well. I love the original. I love them all, but I'm kind of partial to this <laughs> one for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> That's fine. So but I got yeah. a, a loop all the way around all the warps here and I'm pulling it tight. Okay. <clears throat> um, then... fa Facebook user I see there says, Hey ladies, finally got to catch a live. Um, if you could tell us, um, you have to either give StreamYard permission to use your name, or if you can just let us know who you are in the chat, that would be appreciated. Thank you for your patience, folks. I do have arthritis in my fingers, so tying knots sometimes takes a little oh, bit. Oh, you're fine. Take your time, honey. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's it can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes for folks that you know have you know uh, arthritis in their digits and things like that. <laughs> but I think once you get the hang of it, and if you're able to keep it in the position that it's supposed to be in to do it, it makes, just makes it a little more difficult to do on camera because of the <laughs> angles. <laughs> so and that's the truth of it so yes all right so now we've got that mm -hmm. knotted and warped you know take your wildfire again and i did about a wing spin and a half for the ring uh you may need to eat do add more depending on the size of your ring um but and i love these these nippers oh my goodness we're gonna have to talk to Jules about getting those. Not I don't that know what she it's... hasn't. She hasn't <laughs> invested it enough lately. But oh my goodness, yes, go over and see what Jules has added to the shop. There is some real beautiful, beautiful stuff. Yeah. So another little trick I think we've mentioned before is take your pliers and squeeze the end of your wildfire. And then I don't know if you can see it because it's probably focusing on my loom and stuff, but it flattens it out, um, yeah, makes making it, real it nice. mm -hmm. to put it right, should go right in. My hands are not working with me tonight, folks. There we go. So. Hi, Ian. <laughs> She's here with us tonight. Um, that's okay. And it is showing your, your name for us. So all is well. So I know we've talked about this before. You can work either direction on the jewel loom. Uh, Trish likes to work from the bottom up. I like to work from the top down. So one thing to know about doing a ring it, or doing 
even the the bracelets is making sure you leave enough to knot at the end so you need <clears throat> enough uh of your warp to be able to knot over top because that's what's going to hold those beads in at the end so make sure you do that so i'm going to just take my wildfire here on the first warp and i'm going to tie a knot So I'll probably just work here close to the middle because I'm only doing one thing on here. So it gives me lots of room to tie off. I love this bead board that Jules had made. <laughs> it's a <laughs> so, beauty. It's a yeah. Beauty you sure. can purchase this separately in Jules's shop. And so, there's a little piece of cork in the corner too for you to poke your needle into if you're taking a little break from beading, which makes it really nice. And then you know where it is. Especially for me, I have pets. And if I willy-nilly put my needle on top <laughs> of my work, sometimes it gets pulled across the living room or something like that. So try to be careful. Or a robot vacuum. That has um, unfortunately happened. Oh, no. <laughs> So keep it up and keep it your needle in your board. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned, we're starting a slightly different. You're going to pick up seven of the purple. And when we get the new kit, we you can ask us um, what color works best for this. Or we'll figure that out for you yes. if you need to know. But this one seemed to have the most space. And that's what we'll need at the end. So you take your seven. And you're, the first row is always the hardest. I guess I didn't need to skip one. Oh, well. <laughs> it will pull in. It's better to be too wide than too narrow. Right. But yes. I guess it should be put there like that. There we go. So I like to lay it underneath and pull it through. But of course, I have my hand in it. So the other way, there's two ways. You can lay it underneath and pull it through. Or you can push pull it all the way down to the bottom and then lay it in yeah i'm an all the way down to the bottom girl and then... <laughs> <laughs> of course i'm a little backwards on everything i do in life so yeah those central pennsylvania people i tell you i know right they're 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 a backwards breed that's for sure <laughs> and Somebody my in-laws are calling me oh. just to <laughs> have to call them back <laughs> Do you want to show what you're doing right now, Trish? My sure. fingers are not working. Sure, sure. Um, I have gone on to the next row, which is actually this row right here. So I, instead of putting this pattern on the bottom, like uh, you would normally do with your bracelet, I put my purple beads across and then just started right into my pattern. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's what Amber did, but so I have that going across there. I'm just ready to pull my needle through that. And again, I am working from the bottom up. It's just a preference. Whatever works for you. And that's the nice thing about the jewel loom. Um, there's a loom for everyone and you can certainly do whatever technique you're comfortable with. So I did that row and then I'm going to move on to the next one. And I have my beads over here to the right so you guys can see the pattern, but trust me. They are there. And I'm just going to pick up two of the blue and one of the Rosaline and then this beautiful orange color, which is Transparent Rainbow Topaz. Oh, anything that says rainbow, that's for me. <laughs> so we'll pick up two of those. And then our lighter beads. <laughs> And patience is a virtue with 11 O's. That's for sure. At least for myself, it is. But they are so worth it. The intricate patterns you can make with the 11 O's really, really are beautiful. So I have my my um, beads on my needle and I'm just pulling them. This is what I like to do. I pull it down to the bottom like so. Put my needle underneath. It's kind of, uh, that's what's comfortable for me. And you'll, once you loom 
you'll start seeing what your muscle memory is for looming and what makes you feel the most comfortable with it. And then I'm just popping my beads up between those strands and running my needle across the top. And there you go. There's another row. And here I am. Yes, Trish. Uh, you're one row ahead of me, but yes. That's so okay. I, I do apologize. No, I, I'm a bad student. No, no you're perfectly <laughs> fine, honey. My fingers are not working tonight. Oh, I don't honey. know. Well, well this is a teamwork, so we'll yes. get it. We'll get it. So for the first row, we picked up seven purple, and now I picked up the three blue, the one very pale pink, and three more blue. So as you can see, and we're just going to follow that pattern along. Yep. So just like I said, for me, uh, I made four diamonds. Uh, it might be different for you. Maybe you'll put in, if it's slightly bigger than mine, maybe you'll put in an extra row of purple. Yeah. Or um, that's the thing. Think about, you know, how I went and actually back and added in a row before, too, if you need to. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, if, if it's not, if the pattern's ended and you're like, what do I do? You could add, just add another row of purple. It's going to yes. be on the back of your ring. Nobody's going to really see it. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, or you can add a row of blue in or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. you can make it your make own it work. Yeah. Make so it now, your own guys. We certainly do with ours. Yeah. So now we're going to pick up. My hands are just not going to work for me tonight. Pick up two blue. <laughs> They're like shaking. <laughs> I've been there, honey. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry that's happening to you though. Cause I, it's no fun and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably the tiredness. My son was sick all day yesterday and today, so been taking care of him. And yes, you <laughs> sure have. You have a lot on your plate, that's for sure. So, so we've got two blue, two of the pale pink, and one purple in the middle. So we're doing the purple diamond first. And I'll lay it underneath. And maybe Trish will get hers done first and we'll show she'll show you how to get it off. <laughs> we'll see. I don't we'll know. Well, it's a team effort. We'll see. Right. So whoever, whoever gets it done, we'll take it off. No worries. And it gets to gets to show you two different ways of doing things with it, too, guys, which is to me very beneficial. It gives you options, and options are always awesome. Yeah, some it looks like somebody asked a question, Trish. Can you look at Let's that? See. Sure can. It looks like Joan tried to answer, but we're not using a slider tube right now. So purple beads at the end because the slider end will cover them. Well, it, it's not so much for the slider end to cover with the ring now for the earrings. That would certainly be the case, but we need to have um these purple rows to close things up. And Amber had said that. The reason she liked using the purple was because they, they're a little bigger around. It seems like she could get it so she could go through it a few times. So we're going to put a purple row on each end so we can kind of lock them together as we sew it together when we take it off. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be using a technique um, called a zipper and yeah. a stitch. So to Absolutely. close it off. So now I'm picking up one blue. One of the, the pale pinks, three purple, a pale pink, and a blue. So if you're working along with us, great. And if you did weren't here earlier, folks, while we're, we're beating along, thanks for beating along with us. Trish, do you want to tell them what's fun things are happening? Oh, sure. For the month of March, we can yeah. certainly go through that again. That's It's going to be fun. Um, again, pulling it up on my thumb. <laughs> so, of course, tonight we're doing our pattern ring, which is super fun. We thank Amber for putting that together for us. Um, next week is going to be our St. Patty's party, and we're going to make all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to use our St. Patty's charms and um, do some coloring of the charms and make some earrings and some other items. So, it'll be super fun. There's a gorgeous St. Patty's kit that you can get your hands on. 
uh, that we're going to be using that to show you how to do a bracelet. And then on March 17th, I'm going to be doing the Tila bracelet that was so popular that I had on last week. Everyone seemed to like. So we're going to be doing that. And that's going to be gorgeous. March 24th is the sub box unveiling. Unveiling? Unveiling. I don't know what that <laughs> word is. Um, the subscription box unveiling. And then what we are going to try to do each month is use the leftovers from the previous month's kit or subscription box to try and come up with a project to make. So that will show you the value of the kit because Jules never skimps on putting lots of beads in there. So we just want to show you that it's not just the project beads that we'll be getting and we can do some fun things with that. And then March 31st, I can hardly wait for this Amber. She's going to be doing a really beautiful pyramid ring. Just love it. Just love it. So stay tuned for all that. And this month, as long along with every month, we will be doing a giveaway on each show. We will not announce on what show that giveaway will be, but look forward to that too, guys. Yes. So, and Jules is going to be doing something special with Neele on oh, St. Right. Patty's. So you're going to have two weeks of St. Patty's parties. Yeah. Uh, someone asked for a close up. So here's a close up of what we're doing. And it's a good time to show you. So when you are beating it, you start with going under the warps. And then you always are going over top. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see my needle through. That's how I know I'm all the way atop. If, you're, if you don't see your needle through in between the beads, you're going to lose a bead. I've done it so many bajillions of times. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Facebook user, make sure you uh, allow uh, StreamYard to use your name so we can call you out by name. And then someone asked what size beads we're using. We're using 11Os. Yes. And also, I thought I, I pulled up while Trish was talking. Here's the kit. Oh, beautiful. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, so it's, it's this green hemp. It's oh. called Kiss Me, I'm Irish. And these beautiful green fire polish. Mm. we'll be working with next week so and is that five strands oh my gosh yeah this is oh, an awesome lovely. kit yeah awesome is. awesome kit so yeah, for sure if you want to beat along with us next week i think uh this was put up in the the comments if uh joan might do that again i believe it's also in uh the description yes yes for sure so i just picked up one clear two purple a blue two purple and a clear and i'm just gonna keep on beating keep and on beating i don't know if you folks know but we talked about we're going to an hour-long show now so yeah um, that, that'll be great because we can get it'll be nice because i think so we can take go through complete projects show you how to put them on show you how to take them off and put clasps on if need be or you know whatever I think it's going to be a great opportunity to learn some stuff, some fun stuff. Yeah, let us know, folks, if you have any questions about the project we're working on. Uh, if you're just coming on, we're going to make this ring out of the, uh, the pattern that Trish has pulled up on her screen. <clears throat> yeah. So right now I am... Looks like we're on the uh, same row. <laughs> Are we? Yeah. <laughs> wow. How'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> we we're yapping. We. That's oh. what we. That's what we do best. I did mine wrong though. So good thing uh, I noticed. Yes, Pull. for sure. There we go. Always fixable. Yes. Hi Kelly, and hi Paula. I don't know if I even got to say hello to you, dear. Welcome this is in. The row I'm on. How's the weather where everybody is? Hi, Kelly. Hi, Paula. Yes, yeah, so spring coming to anyone. We know that it's in Tennessee currently from what Miss Joan told us, so we're super jealous of that. We know. It's like 27 degrees here. Yep. So here we go. So, yeah, that, that is the center point of what 
of the pattern right there, guys. Let me see if I can get it to focus for you. There you go. So cool how that comes together. And keep in mind, guys, I was never a seed beater. If someone even tried to give me seed beads, I would laugh in their faces. <laughs> so honestly, the jewel loom has turned me in to a seed bead hoarder now. And I never thought that would be the case. But for <laughs> people that maybe don't like the see the this bead stitching, this is a great option because I can see bead, but I have a I have some structure here to make it easier on myself. At least that's what works for me anyway. But um and looming is so soothing. So yes, oh absolutely. Well, we got let's see. Brenda says 82 in North Carolina. Kelly says raining and heat wave of 40 degrees. Still snow in my yard. Kelly, where are you at? If you don't mind me ask, asking. Um, Paula, it was cold today in Indiana, 30s, but Saturday it's supposed to be close to 70. Oh, wonderful. That oh, wow. Lovely. We got to hold my beer. Surprise for all viewers. 15% off the Jewel Loom store all month by using your code YouTube15OFF. Please still use the affiliate links. Awesome. Thank you, Joan. Look at that, guys. I think that came from off. Jules. <laughs> it says Joan, so I don't know. Oh, okay. oh, no. There's a Jewel Loom one, and then Joan also put it in. Okay. I didn't look up further so oh kelly's in eastern washington okay okay yeah so those they're probably about the same as we are with the weather i would guess yeah i don't know is so, that true kelly are you similar to us pennsylvania we're in pa here and um uh, <laughs> we have seasons <laughs> i'm yeah yeah so i'm on the bottom of my uh diamond here i almost called it a triangle yeah so I just did two blue, one of the pale pink, a purple, and I think my, huh, I just got caught in my uh, headphone wire here. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's why I put mine up my shirt and into my ear because yeah. I know myself. Mine's a little thick for that. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kelly's close to Canada, so there you go. She may even be a little colder than we are. So here you guys get to see me make more mistakes. <laughs> well, we learn from mistakes. Exactly. We learn from mistakes. So this is the place to do it. So, you know, if we all make mistakes, so we need to learn how to fix them. And, yes. And Amber's Which, very good at explaining <laughs> how to do that for sure. Well, hopefully you don't get all mixed up in your headphone wire. I mean, I have this super... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's not your issue. <laughs> no, no, but you know, <laughs> things happen. Believe me, yeah, it's, it's fairly I, thick. It's like an old phone wire. So yeah, yeah. I usually put it behind myself. There we go. Yeah. All so worried that, about my hands. I wasn't thinking. Get this back in here. And everybody lays their loom different. Uh, you can even see just with Trish and I working, how we lay our looms is different. And this is my belly's down here. So I usually work straight from the bottom up. So that's just where I'm comfortable. And like I said, your, your muscle memory from doing the looming, your body will decide, you know, what's most comfortable for you. It's usually in the teens all winter, Kelly says. Beverly oh. Walters, it has been 79 here in Atlanta. Is that what that is? I, I'm not real good with abbreviations. I think <laughs> I think that means Elena. Thank you, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, oh, we gotta not... laugh at ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we're probably cooler. We don't. We're not dry and hot all summer here. We. No. I like our sum. Our summers are almost like spring. They get a little yes, hot, but absolutely, they're more like other people's springs. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't go that 90, 100 degree oh, weather. Gosh, I, can't, yeah. I can't. Yeah. I don't like... go outside as it is in the summer mostly. So <laughs> stay in air conditioning. Yeah. Usually the highs are the 80s if it's hot yeah. here. So usually the next row. And I'm on this row right here. I'm on one below you. Okay. So there's mine. 
and I'm just pulling that down. I when I work at a table like this, I work at it sideways. Um, but when I uh, sit in front of the TV, I like to put it on my lap. <laughs> yep. See, yeah. I have to have a tray to have mine on. I can't okay. do the lap thing. I ha I'm a lot more comfortable with a tray, but. So what we're. We Go ahead, honey. Oh, no, no, you're good. Go. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, it's probably just what all, you know, I'm used to what I prefer. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have those fun trays to put on your lap. So. <laughs> you don't either. You'll have to get one of those. Maybe get one for your birthday or something. Oh, we do yeah. have the standing ones. So yeah, sometimes those are nice. I lean it up against that because they're just too high for me being short. <laughs> That's understandable. Certainly understandable. So, yeah. So at the bottom of the diamond, this is really a, one of the few different rows is I pick up one of the inside color of the next diamond. So that happens to be like this yellow orange. And then everything in the middle is the blue. So five of those. Gotcha. And you're actually working from this end. I believe because you started. Oh yeah. Did you start, I did start with purple? Yep. Okay. So she started on, which it doesn't matter. You can work from either end. That's for sure. You'll so Amber's do, doing it, starting with the purple oh. to the yellow and I'm doing it from the yellow to the purple. It doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter guys. That's however. Yeah. I, that just how, since I work from top to bottom and you work uh -huh. bottom to top. That's how we see things. So in either way works. Yeah. Let us know how we can make it more accessible to you. You know, that's, that's one thing we really want to do with the jewel loom is make, you know, make it accessible to a lot of people. Yes. It's such a blessing to do. And it is a wonderful, relaxing um, craft as far as I'm concerned. And again, for me uh, with the seed beads, you know, a Hobby Lobby and jewels and all those are, you know, happy because I am a seed bead purchaser big time now. So. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's focusing on this beautiful loom that Jules made. Yes. That <laughs> but that's so where I'm at. Oh, looking so. good. Looking good. Yeah. Do any of you have this kit that have joined us tonight? Have you made the, anything yet? Kelly says, uh, I move mine all over and twist around while working. <laughs> and she said, um, I have a, a chair arm and tabletop to balance my big loom. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's well, super Zen meditation. Time flies. It does for sure. And Catherine yes. says, I'm from Michigan. Did Jules start selling her bead boards? Yes. The yes. bead boards are up on the site. And if you can, certainly use our affiliate links. It does not cost you a penny, but it does benefit us. And we would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. So you can buy just the bead board now. Yep. So sure. if you go on the website, which I have pulled up right, you go... And you pull it up, it's under, I was just looking at it today. Where did it go? You go in menu and um, uh, under accessories, I believe, right? Okay. Or is it with the looms? I'm not seeing it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's under accessories. It's pretty, it's near the wildfire. Okay. So there it is, folks. You can buy just so pretty beadboard. It's right next yeah. to the really pretty pink wildfire, which Blue. I need to buy some more of. Yes, <laughs> most certainly. That's my favorite. I really like the pink too. I'm out. This would be pretty with the pink wildfire. Certainly. I'm just using white, but you could certainly use pink with it. I, mm -hmm. I ran out of my pink. I used it all up. <gasps> okay. Or the blue might work. I don't know. I think the pink would be prettier. That would be pretty. I almost used blue tonight. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to use white. Keep it simple. And it's easier to see on camera, yeah. too. So. so I'm on to my next diamond here. So I'll be doing the purple diamond now. 
So if you're new, we're working on using what's left of the seed bead kit because you get so much in it. So make sure you grab either a tape measure, like a um, sewing tape measure or a piece of paper, measure your finger and yep. figure out for me, I'm doing this finger and it, it works for me to do um, four diamonds and then two rows of purple. So you'll need a row of purple at the beginning and one at the end. And that, that I found to be the easiest color to close off with. And you can see Trish using her tape measure. And I showed earlier, you can just also get a piece of paper and wrap it around your finger. And if you don't have a tape measure and lay it next to a ruler. Or ribbon or string or anything, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All kinds of ways to measure your finger. Certainly. So you're going to be doing the yellow diamond and I'm going to be doing the purple diamond next. That's that correct. Right? Yes. Okay. And Joan has graciously put up the beadboard up for us. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, dear. She is a rock star. Most certainly. Maybe we won't get this done in an hour. We only got five more minutes. Oh, oh well. <laughs> but you know, I think the gabbing might have something to do with that. What are you talking about? But you know, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. We can um, get as far as we can get without drawing it out too far for everyone. Yeah. Um, but this is going to at least certainly give them the content, you know, oh, yeah. to be able to make one of their own now and amber may be able to just to put a little quick video up in the jewel loom group showing how to do the zipper technique if we don't get that far i don't know if she would be able to do that for us or one of us could yeah um definitely i, I should have had one set aside i didn't know it would take me this long with the gabbing <laughs> Maybe I don't it's use... going to need to be a two hour show. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that would be too long for us. We don't want to do that to people. Right. We just don't. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, yeah, I don't have any bases laid out that I could just show um, how to do the zipper technique. So, what, yeah, what I can do is I can put a short video together and we can have Jules post it to um, her YouTube, how to finish it off, and also on Facebook, since not everybody's on Facebook. Um, yeah, absolutely. But virtually, so you'll just keep working the pattern based on what size finger you do have. So as I said, see how I have the two rows there. And um, so virtually the ring, all it is, is just like the bracelet. You work the pattern and it actually, mine was the length that of the pattern that you get. So it is four diamonds. Oh, that worked um, out. Yeah. So that worked out really nice for me <laughs> for this finger. I don't, I always, I wear my other rings on the other fingers, but um, I will put, put, put together the video of how to zipper close that. Um, so yeah. Find out your measurement, finish out, and we will get that post. Oh, thank you, Rose. Oh, thank you. Thank Rose. you. That's so sweet. We try, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just another idea for those of you who weren't here at the beginning. This is all of the bead pattern right here on my finger, plus yep. the two purple rows. So this is about with all of our gabbing as far as we got, <laughs> but, uh, but there, I, I think, the, I think the technique is came across at least I hope so. So it's the same idea, um, that I, you know, you could add in, I did one diamonds and an extra row on either side of the diamond to make earrings. So the same idea as the bracelet. So y these are just some ideas, um, on what you can do with the uh, extra seed beads. Unless you make a hat band, then, well, then you might not have any extras. But <laughs> yeah. if you make a bracelet, you will have extras. So now you can also make a ring and earrings. Okay. Oh, your bracelet. Absolutely. Or, 
And another option would be possibly a pendant. Yep. I was just going to say yep. that. You could even do two diamonds and add a little bead tassel or a, a or another, you know, anything on the end there. And you can make, you could have a whole, you'd have enough to, to make, um, also make a pendant. Yeah. So, so yeah.